Hello everyone, I'm Richard Fredrickson and what a great day, a day of history here in Joliet, Illinois on the campus of the old Silver Cross Hospital. If you haven't been back here, you should make it. It's on Eagle Street and we are today uh, doing the ribbon cutting and, and talking with the uh, CEO and President of Volunteers of Illinois and uh, Nancy Hughes-Moyer is with us today. A lot of activity coming up in just a moment or so. We have a huge jam-packed program and a ribbon to cut and you're going to be with us as we do that. Nancy, first of all, I'm going to tuck this over here and welcome you Thank to Joliet. You. Thank you. Thank you. It's really a privilege to have you here and what a beautiful day to celebrate an important place, a very you important have, place. I mean, the weather, blue sky, about, I don't know, 69 degrees, 70 degrees out here today. And we're all set. The American Legion Band is tuning up. The stage is being set. The uh, Richard Sound people and Skip Lanham uh, is here with uh, Cindy Lanham doing our camera work and uh, JCTV on location for you today. So tell us a little bit about Volunteers of Illinois first. So Volunteers of America of Illinois is part of a national ministry of service that has spanned more than 100 years and we're spread throughout the country. And our goal is to lift up and support some of the most vulnerable members of our communities and, and give them access to the resources and the supports that allow them to really live a very full and abundant life. Yeah, that sounds great, a wonderful mission. Now this is number three. Of, uh, of the all called manners? They're all called Hope Manor. So, this is part of our Hope Manor continuum of services and their permanent supportive housing for veterans and veterans with families. Okay, we'll take you to, to number one, two, and then we'll. We'll open up number three. So we ha this is our third one that we've opened in the past five years since 2012. And the first one was over on the west side of Chicago in Humble Park. Uh, that development called Hope Manor One is primarily serving single male veterans, uh, actually spreading all conflicts uh, in all branches of the military. Um, and uh, that particular program is much more uh, service intensive and for folks that are struggling perhaps with some physical disabilities and uh, some mental health challenges. And then we built Hope Manor Two, which which is the, was the first campus-style development for veterans with families. And we built that over on the south side of Chicago. And that's on about three acres uh, of land. Um, and it's uh, 73 units of housing for veteran-headed households. More than 100 children, children of veterans, uh, actually call that place home, um, along with their parents, some of which one or both of their parents served in the military. Uh, and here is Hope Manor 3. And Hope Manor 3, also known as Hope Manor Joliet, was really modeled after our campus-style development uh, of Hope Manor 2. Uh, this is 67 units. The majority of them are family units. So these are veteran headed households, uh, men and women who've returned from the service, uh, perhaps struggling with employment, struggling to find employment, struggling uh, with finding housing and stable housing and maybe some other issues and just really working hard to create a better life for themselves and their children. And we wanted to be a part of helping them do that. Nancy, it must be every one of these events, including today's event, has to be also a bit emotional for you. It, it is, um, you know, because every single one of these have their own challenges and it's never easy to build any of these things. A whole lot of resources have to come together to make these things possible. Not just raising the funds to build it, but you actually have to raise the funds to be able to run it. And you have to make sure you get the proper zoning and you have to make sure that you have land that's affordable and, and, and that this type of a facility can be built on. And so we're so grateful to all the people that come together with really a shared vision and a common sense of purpose and a passion for supporting veterans to make this possible. So that you have your GPS is set when you come on out here to take a look. What Do you know the official address of the we, place? We, because all the buildings have a separate address, the main address that we'll use is 1300 Copperfield Avenue in Joliet. Okay. So, so put that's that Copperfield. Yeah, this is Copperfield uh, right here. Okay. So if you I, oh, in that address, uh, you'll get here. Perfect. GPSs. Now, here's the other thing that uh, is coming up here in just a moment or so. You talked about all the people kind of gathering together in support and core supporters. Uh, you have two, you have several uh, folks going to make comments here today. Um, one is a, uh, a U.S. Senator and one is a U.S. Congressman. I know that uh, Dick Durbin is going to be coming up here in a couple of moments. Uh, on the Appropriations Committee. I suppose it doesn't hurt to have him on your side. Well, we've been very fortunate because uh, Senator Durbin has been on our side for a long time. This is a really passionate advocate uh, for veterans, and so he has really uh, been on our side and advocating for what we're trying to do since we opened our very first housing development for veterans. Uh, he's, he's really, really a, a tremendous, passionate voice for the work that we're doing. Uh, scientist who's serving in Congress, Bill Foster, will be here as well, I believe. He's scheduled on the program. 
Yes, in fact, he can maybe help us with some of our engineering problems here uh, on our stage that we ran into early this morning. But uh, yeah, he's been um, certainly uh, was a really big help in terms of allowing us to make all the progress that we had to with the city of Joliet uh, and making sure that we found a really welcoming place here in Will County. Yeah, now, uh, it's coming up in just a few moments, but the uh, very special singer also for the National Anthem today? Yes, Nika, who's actually a veteran and a resident here of uh, Hope, Manor, uh, Hope Manor Joliet, will actually be singing our National Anthem, and it'll be a real treat, and we're real excited that she's willing to do that. It's a hard song to sing for anyone, uh, and, and she's not necessarily a professional singer per se, uh, but she ha she's a wonderful vocalist, and it takes a lot of courage to stand up here and do this, and uh, you know, and, and they're going to be practicing that soon, but this is not, this is not certainly a, a group that she's had been able to practice with a lot and you know so when you're a vocalist singing a really hard song and you're doing it with a band you haven't had a lot of chance to practice with it's very brave yeah, very, it's very brave, brave 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 indeed American Legion is our you know a championship band so they're they're gonna help and be a, a great support for her uh, you have others who are gonna be mentioned of course our mayor uh, Robert Odekirk will also be here today and many others so stay tuned stay with us and as we bring you the uh, ribbon cutting from Hope Manor, Joliet. Good morning. Good morning. One more time. Good morning. morning. That's much better, much better. Thank you. Uh, my name is Nancy Hughes Moyer, and I have the great privilege of being the President and CEO for Volunteers of America of Illinois. And I'm so happy and so very proud to be here with all of you this morning uh, on this incredible, beautiful morning uh, in the city, in the wonderful city of Joliet. Uh, you know, again, we're a human service organization, but we're also a, also a faith-based organization. And I think when we have been now lucky three times in a row to get weather like this, I'm convinced that being a faith-based organization is undoubtedly giving us a little bit of an edge and we're happy to take that edge. Uh, we are here today to celebrate the opening of a new community, uh, a new place to call home for some very, very, very special people, a community we call Hope Manor Joliet, a place that for generations to come is going to welcome home men and women who have bravely and courageously served in our armed services and it will provide them with an amazing place to live and raise their families as they pursue the American dream they fought so hard to preserve for the rest of us. First, what I'm really struck by as I think about all that's going on in our country right now, isn't it great to be standing in a moment uh, and in a place where we all agree on something? A place, a time, and a moment where we can all be celebrating and honoring uh, the very same thing, that this place is important and that these people that will call it home deserve to be honored and celebrated with a wonderful place to always be home. For those of you that don't know, this is our third Hope Manor development, permanent supportive housing for veterans and their families, and it's the third grand opening that we've had since 2012. I couldn't have quite imagined back in 2012 when we had our first grand opening that five years later uh, we would be celebrating our third and in the process actually of developing our fourth. But if I had known then, I would have asked myself two questions. One, would it get any easier? And two, will it feel as wonderful and as exciting to open the third as it did the first? Well, I have the answers to those questions. No. It does not get any easier. Uh, and that's why there are so very many people on this stage, uh, is because it doesn't get any easier. And yes, it feels as wonderful and as monumental to open a third as it does the first, because we have the great privilege and the joy of watching another group of amazing veterans walk in to these doors, uh, open the door to their own new home. And as I think about what it took here, what it took to get here today, and all the people uh, that helped make it happen, I'm reminded of a quote that actually from Jane Addams that, that hangs uh, in my office. What, after all, that has maintained the human race on this old globe, despite all the calamities of nature and all the tragic failings of mankind, if not faith in new possibilities and the courage to advocate for them? 
So many people took a leap of faith with us and believed that this wonderful place was not only possible, but that it was necessary. And they had the courage to keep working with us to make it happen, despite some pretty daunting obstacles along the way. The city of Joliet, under the leadership of Mayor Odekirk, our wonderful, partner, our wonderful partnership with Ida under Audra Hammernick, uh, the support of some amazing leaders like Senator Durbin and Congressman Foster and Senator Pat McGuire who have stood with us throughout this process and with Senator Durbin who, have st who stood with us courageously uh, for all three of our Hope Manors. The incredible contributions of the Silver Cross Hospital, J.P. Morgan Chase, NEF, BMO Harris, the Home Depot Foundation, Niagara Bottling, uh, City Community Development, the Housing Authority of Joliet, the Regional Housing Initiative, and even though they're a little far from home, the Chicago Housing Authority. And of course, our incredible, incredible development team. Our folks from National, John Letterer and Jack Gordon, uh, Pat Sheridan, uh, our folks on the ground here, our architects, Mike Jarabek, Keith Criminger, uh, our wonderful general contractors from J.J. Duffy, there's Mike Moselle, I see him over there. Uh, the folks from Applegate, Thorne Thompson, uh, Ben Applegate, and Mitch and Joe from Milner and Karen Gala, and of course, Rod Tonelli, who's probably one of the first people that helped sort of roll this boulder uphill, and he's over there somewhere. So thanks, Rod, for all of your early work on this. We couldn't have gotten here without you. We're so, so grateful to all of these people. But with all due admiration and great affection for all the wonderful people on the stage and out there uh, who made this happen, the very best part of today the very best part of Hope Manor Joliet is the people that live here. The veterans and their families who will call this place home uh, for generations to come. These are wonderful families and individuals who have already served our country and are now working hard to improve their own lives. The lives of their families and of their neighbors and of their community. And in doing so, I am confident and I can assure you all that they will make Hope Manor Joliet not, one, not only one of the best places to live in Joliet, but the best place for veterans to call home in Will County. Before we jump into hearing from the wonderful folks behind me, I need to do two important things and perhaps the most important things I'll do today. We are so deeply honored to have a very, very special guest with us today. I would like to introduce all of you to Mr. Fred Osborne Criminger. Mr. Criminger, if you could just wave your hand. He is here with his son, some of whom are parking the car, I understand. Um, and he honors us in so many ways here today because in addition to being a World War II veteran uh, who served in the South Pacific from 1943 to 1946, his son, who is also here with him today, Keith Criminger, is our architect who helped build this place for veterans. And Mr. Criminger, I know every day he showed up here, he was particularly proud to be able to do this as a small way to honor you, his dad, who I know he's so proud of. And all of your sons were so proud that they donated a bench that bears your name that will forever be in our children's park. So thank you for your service. Lastly, if we could have all the veterans, if you're already standing, if you could raise your hand, all the veterans on the stage in the audience, please stand so we can express a very small token of our appreciation for your tremendous service to our country. <laughs> now I'd like to introduce a very special part of, oh my goodness. It's okay, our architect Mike is over there. He will handle this. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Um, I'd like to introduce Carlton Evans, who is our Director of Veterans Outreach and also our agency chaplain to lead us in prayer this morning. Thank you and good morning to all. Let us get right into this and give him thanks. Dear Heavenly Father, first of all, we want to say thank you for all things. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for this opportunity you've given us to serve your people. Lord, how did we get here? And the way we got here was because you said so. And we thank you for it. We thank you for all who had a major part, small part, in-between part 
in making this possible. We ask that you bless the property that we're on. We ask that you bless the people who will be living here. We also ask that you bless this community overall, that we may be a beacon of light. And we ask that you continue to shine upon us because, Lord, without these things, this would definitely not be possible. So we thank you. We praise you. We honor you. We glorify your magnificent and strong name. And that name is Jesus. Amen. We said you were going to meet some special and very brave people today, uh, and you are about to perhaps meet the bravest. Uh, one of our very special residents, Nika Malone, is going to lead us in the national anthem, which is no small task, but we know it's going to be a big treat for all of us. So please extend a warm welcome to our resident, Nika Malone. Stripes and bright stars through the powerless fight. All the rain that we wash was so gallantly streaming, and the rocket such a great job this morning. We have really some uh, special people that have been so, so supportive of all of our work, and I'm so excited to, to introduce this next person. Uh, senator Durbin has been the senior senator, United States Senator for Illinois since 1997. He's been the Senate Majority Whip since 2005, which is the second highest ranking position in the Democratic Party leadership in the Senate. But what we really appreciate is that he has used his leadership in the Senate to push through some very important pieces of legislation that have resulted in an increase in critical resources for the men and women in our armed forces, as well as making sure that those men and women have adequate support and assistance when they come home. To name just a few, he led the successful fight for an increase in combat pay for soldiers and an increase in the family separation allowance for families who have a spouse or parent who have been deployed. He ensured that reserve and guard members who served in Iraq and Afghanistan have access to veterans' preference in federal hiring without having to leave the guard or reserve. And recently, he worked to create a better health care system for our veterans when they return home, including expanded VA funding and a recently enacted program to identify and treat those who have suffered from traumatic brain injury or PTSD. He has been a true true champion for veterans and those currently serving in the armed forces and he has been a tireless advocate for the work our work to support veterans when they come home on a personal note i have watched several of the senate hearings over the last several months and i can just say how very proud i was uh, of our senator for being such an incredible statesman who embodied all of the things we want to see in our leaders a fair but tough inquiry into the facts a civil and respectful approach to debate of the issues and an honorable and passionate representative of the people back home as i watched him i said with pride yep that's my senator from illinois it is my it is my great honor to introduce 
to all of you, our United States Senator and a great friend to Volunteers of America and a passionate advocate for Illinois and for our, venators, for our veteran, Senator Dick Durbin. Nancy, that was so nice, nice I wish I'd have brought my tape recorder. <laughs> uh, I'm honored to be here today. I'm sorry that my uh, colleague, uh, Senator Tammy Duckworth, can't be here. Uh, I know her heart is here today. Uh, an amazing person who has served uh, our country and served our state uh, with such distinction. And now I'm honored to have as my colleague in the U.S. Senate, uh, Congressman Bill Foster. It's great to see you. Uh, Senator Pat McGuire, great to see you as well. Mayor Oda Kirk. Uh, all the elected officials here and VOA President um, Mr. Mike King, thank you for coming in and joining us and a special thanks to the veterans. I spend a lot of my time in airports, as you can imagine, traveling all over the state and all over the country. I'm sure Bill does the same. Struck by a flight I took yesterday from St. Louis back up here to Chicago. Of course, they gave preference uh, to those entering the aircraft to those who were in military uniform. But then after we got on board, uh, for reasons, unusual reasons, I suppose, the flight attendant uh, said, let's uh, give a big round of applause to all the veterans who are on board this aircraft, and we did. And I thought to myself, that's a good thing, but it's not good enough. Think about the issue of homelessness among veterans in America. Between the years 2010 and 2016, we reduced the number of homeless veterans in America by half. That's a good thing. But it's not good enough, because tonight 40,000 veterans will be homeless across America, 950 right here in the state of Illinois. We honor our veterans. We tell them thank you for their service, and we mean it, Mr. Preminger. Thank you so much for your service and the service of everyone who's gathered. But we need more than words. We need actions, and that's why we're here today. The Volunteers of America have over and over again shown that they are going to come through with actions that make a difference. For 67 families, it's going to be first class housing for veterans and their families in this project right behind us. It's going to give them a chance to raise their families in dignity, to feel safe, and to have the kind of surroundings they deserve for having served our country and risked their lives for our country. That is what it's all about. But there is more to be done. We have a caregivers program, which I started years ago. And it said, if you come home a disabled veteran, we'll give you an option. You want to stay in your home rather than go to a facility? You want to be with your family? We're going to help that caregiver, that spouse, that parent, make sure you stay at home where you want to be and make sure they're prepared to give you the medical help that you need. That caregiver program is a good one but it's a program that just applies to those who have served in the last 15 or 16 years. It needs to be extended, and I'm happy to report, Nancy, on a bipartisan basis, we are going to extend that. So the caregivers program applies to disabled veterans who serve our nation in any context. What we do today is a good thing. I want to thank Mayor Odekirk, as well as the Joliet Housing Authority, Veterans of America, State of Illinois Housing Authority, uh, we come together usually for very happy occasions, and this is one I'm honored to be part of your program and to honor those veterans who served our nation. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Durbin. Appreciate you attending today and all your kind words. Uh, I'm Dan Kardatsky. I'm the board chair of Volunteers of America of Illinois. Uh, first of all, I wanted to thank our other board members that are attending today, Landon, Carlos, I saw Erica, uh, Eric is here as well, so thank you guys for taking time and, and, and coming out today to support us. Uh, and I briefly wanted to introduce Congressman Bill Foster. Congressman Foster has been serving Illinois in the U.S. Congress since 2008. He is currently the U.S. Representative of the 11th District, which includes Joliet. In addition to his career in public service, he is a scientist and a very successful businessman. He co-founded Electronic Theater Controls, a company that now manufactures over half the theater lighting equipment in the United States. In addition to serving on the House Committee on Financial Services and the House Committee on Science, Space, and Technology, he's become a leading voice in Congress in the fight to eradicate the opioid epidemic that is destroying too many lives across our country. He has been a real friend of the Volunteers of America and our work here in Joliet, and we are so grateful for his support. It is my honor to introduce the United States Representative of the 11th District, Congress Congressman Bill Foster. Thank you. Um, good morning, everyone, and thank you for inviting me to speak 
here today. Uh, for those of you who might not know me, I am Congressman Bill Foster. I am, a, as was mentioned, a scientist and businessman. I'm honored to represent uh, the Joliet area as part of the 11th Congressional District of Illinois in the House of Representatives of the United States of America. And I'd like to thank Senator Durbin, State Senator McGuire, Mayor Odekirk, and everyone from the Joliet and Will County area who are joining us today for this important event. We're here to celebrate the great work of the Volunteers of America of Illinois, who through this brand new development are providing a home for veterans in our community who might otherwise face homelessness. The Hope Manor of Joliet will be a service-rich community for veterans and provide immediate access to a broad range of on-site supportive services. The brave men and women who make the choice to wear the uniform of the United States to, and defend our freedom in the armed services sacrifice so much in service to us all. You know, our country should not go to war lightly. We should not go to war out of arrogance or economic self-interest or all the bad reasons that countries go to war. And when our country senses an affront, uh, we should turn our cheek again and again and again. But in the end, there will be wars that we cannot turn away from. And when that happens, there is a debt that we can never repay to those who risk everything to keep our country free. So it's our solemn responsibility to do all that we can, not only to support them as they serve, but to honor that service when they return home and help them and their families as they return to our communities. Nearly 40,000 veterans call Will County home, and that is something that we're all very proud of. But we must continue working to help support those veterans and to assist them in their reintegration back into our community and into our society. I was so proud to see that Will County became the 50th community in the nation to end veteran homelessness. And it's a direct result of work that's being done like, by organizations like the Volunteers of America. Hope Manor Joliet stands as a testament uh, so that um, the work that we accomplish um, is, is really the work that we do together and is something that has to continue. Uh, it also represents our commitment as a community to honoring the service of our veterans and supporting them when they and their families return home. Thank you all. We have heard and will continue to hear from some very, very important people about what we're doing here today. But perhaps the most important voice that we're about to hear from is why we're here today. And so it is my great privilege to introduce to all of you an important voice in all of this today, a very, very brave woman, a veteran and a resident here at Hope Manor Joliet, who's gonna tell us a little bit about her story. Please, please, a very, very warm welcome for Ms. Dina Gwynn. Good morning. When I was asked to speak a couple weeks ago, Jamie didn't even come out and ask. She was like, you're speaking. I was like, okay, I've got a mouth. I'll speak. We, my husband and I are one of the first set of 12 residents in the building number four. We moved in in February, the end of February. Our story begins, we were married 20 some years, almost 20 some years. He got sick. We didn't know what it was. He quit his job in November of 14. He was working as a correctional officer at Statesville. Couldn't do it anymore. We thought he had neurological issues, electrolyte imbalance. Turns out he was diagnosed in April of 15 with Parkinson's disease. We have three children, a high schooler, William who is going into the delayed entry program for the Army, He's following in the family's footsteps. Our, chill, our girls are junior hires right down the block at Gompers. We were homeless for a good six months. We stayed at Morningstar. I got the call from Jamie on a Sunday night saying we were gonna be f signing our lease. That was uh, amazing because I lost my job. I couldn't support my family. My husband was sick. We have a place. There are 67 families. It's not just one little group. We are a family. This is what we are here to support everybody. So when you have, I'm sorry, um, they're not just my neighbors. They're the people that 
I talk to at night. Keisha and I go sit out on on the bench at 9 o'clock at night to get away from the kids so we could talk and have five minutes or 20 minutes or an hour of them knocking on the window going, it's 10 o'clock, come in. Um, but they're, this is my family. I love them. I love Jamie and Linda Desiree. She knows our story from back in 2014 when we first started with Volunteers of America. Her and Cassie Wallachek, dealing with them too. I don't know what to say. I'm honored to be here. I love this place. I wish they would do more. Like, honestly, I'm going to open it up. I wish they wouldn't tear down the hospital. They'd put a VA hospital right here. <laughs> That's just me. That's all I've, every time I look out at it, I'm like, we're right here. I'm like, that is perfect. That would be perfect for everybody because of coming in. So I, we have a three bedroom house. I don't know what more to say. I am so honored to be here. I am so thankful I have a house. I could raise my children. I could take care of my husband. If he gets sick, I could take him right here or take him up to Heinz right off of, just jump right on the expressway. And we're centrally located. We're family. That's, I am so honored to have everybody here and to give us all this. We, we, the veterans deserve it. Thank you. Well, people often ask us uh, how we do this, and again, I think ultimately that's far less important than why we do this. Uh, and Dina, thank you so much, not just for speaking for yourself, uh, but for speaking for all the extraordinary men and women and families uh, that so deserve a safe and happy and wonderful and welcoming place to call home. And quite frankly, it's the very, very least uh, we can all do in exchange for what they've all done for us. Uh, so uh, my next guest uh, is really at home here uh, today in Joliet, having grown up in Joliet. And he's truly, if you look at his bio or you know anything about him, he has truly dedicated his life to serving the people of Will County, beginning with his role as a teacher uh, for more than a decade in schools and stretching through his role today as the state senator for the 43rd district. In addition to serving as the chairman of the Higher Education Committee, he is also the vice chairman of state government and Veterans, Affa uh, Veterans Affairs Committee. Uh, important work to all of us sitting here today. Senator McGuire is an important voice in the state legislature for many issues that are important to us at Volunteers of America, including advocating for higher wages for people caring for our most vulnerable citizens, pushing the Department of Corrections to provide better mental health treatment to inmates, which is not only humane and moral, it is good public safety policy. And he has been leading the inquiry into the systemic challenges in our state's child welfare system that may have contributed to the tragic death of one-year-old Samaj Crosby right here in Will County. And as an organization that also provides child welfare services throughout the state, we know uh, what an important inquiry that is. But we also know him as just the very nice man that comes to our properties and talks to our residents and listens to their concerns and tries to always make their lives a little better. I also know him personally as a man who always keeps his promises. Whenever he comes and visits, he's got a little notepad and, a little, and his pen, and he's taking notes. And everything that he says he's going to follow up on, he follows up on. And to make sure I don't forget it, he sends me a letter and reminds me that he did exactly what he said he was going to do. I have a little file of my letters from Senator McGuire. Uh, so he will always have my vote because, again, a man that keeps his promises is a man we need in leadership. He has been a real friend to Volunteers of America and in our work here in Will County, uh, and I'm so happy to introduce him here to all of you and to thank him for his great support of our work. Thank you very much. Good morning. I need to borrow Senator Durbin's tape recorder. <laughs> uh, I'm honored to be with you today, and I think it's appropriate that this uh, stretch of elected officials speeches was interrupted by the spouse of a veteran I don't think it can ever be said too many times that there wouldn't be United States senators or members of Congress or state senators or city council members or county board members if not for you our veterans we wouldn't have our American system of government we would not have the opportunity to serve if not for your service so thank you from the bottom of my heart Hope Manor is perfectly named because as we heard from Dina, 
Hope Manor provides hope and respect and a better life to the men, women, and children who are living here, and also to the surrounding neighborhoods. I've learned that VOA excels at blending public and private resources, not only to improve communities, but also, as we heard from Dina, to form communities like the one here at Hope Manor. And here in Joliet, Hope Manor does, or I'm sorry, VOA does that on both sides of the river, here at Hope Manor on the east side and at Mary Chris Village on the west side. So again, I want to congratulate and thank everyone who took part in this. Thank you, BOA, for bettering my hometown. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. And the people at Mary Crest will be sad that they didn't get to see you today, too. Uh, we first set our sights on uh, an opportunity to build another campus-style development for veterans with families on this campus uh, back in 2012. And as you may recall in my opening comments, I said we hit a few obstacles along the way, and that would be an understatement. Uh, and in 2012, we hit the first one and perhaps what could have been the biggest one. There just wasn't enough support in the city of Joliet for us at that time, and the project sort of got tabled and withered on the vine for well over a year. But fate interceded and our fortunes changed when a new mayor was elected a couple years later and suddenly Hope Manor Joliet had a chance again. And while there is no time here this morning, if you want to know, Rod can walk you through some of it, uh, to walk you through all the peaks and valleys of developing a supportive ho uh, housing project anywhere, uh, suffice to say without vigorous and unwavering support from local leaders, it just doesn't happen. And the veterans that call Hope Manor Joliet home today have a courageous and passionate ally in the mayor of Joliet, Robert Odekirk. Just glancing at his bio, uh, you can see that being committed to the men and women who served in our nation's military is no big leap for a man who, with his extensive record of public service, both here at home and serving almost two years in Iraq through the U.S. State Department. I can say without qualification and without hesitation that Hope Manor Joliet could not have happened and almost didn't happen uh, and would not be here today without his support and his unwavering commitment to serving others. He made a commitment throughout the process to stand with veterans and to make sure that Joliet will be, for generations to come, a community that veterans can be sure they will find a welcoming and a supportive place to call home. Please join me in welcoming the very courageous Mayor Bob Odekirk. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming. Um, you know, on behalf of myself and the Joliet City Council, I'd like to welcome everyone who came to Joliet today. It's a great day for our city. I want to echo the comments made by my colleagues directed towards the veterans. Thank you for the sacrifices you made and for your service. We would not be here without you. Um, I do want to recognize some of the city council people that are here today, Councilman Pat Mudrin, Councilman Don Dickinson, Councilwoman Betty Gavin, and Councilwoman Jan Quillman, who herself is married to a Vietnam veteran. These are issues that we take seriously in the city of Joliet. We, we have an unwavering commitment to veterans, and we are so proud that we are able to do this today. Um, we, I want to thank Volunteers of America for choosing Joliet and for sticking with the process. There were a lot of bumps, but we got here today. So, you know, as a policymaker, we make decisions from 30,000 feet, and we argue about what's good for the city, what's bad for the city. But when you get here at the ground level and you hear stories like we heard today from the people who are actually affected by it, it really brings it home how important some of these decisions are. So I'm very proud of what's happened here in Joliet, the redevelopment in an older part of town. We have two U.S. congressmen here for an event on the east side of Joliet. Doesn't happen very often. So, so it's a great day. Again, I'd like to thank everybody involved who, who played a part in this, the city council for standing strong. I want to thank Volunteers of America for choosing Joliet. And I officially would like to welcome all the 67 new residents or new homes to Joliet. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Well, as all of us know, every home starts with a place, uh, a physical place, and we are so fortunate that the wonderful people from Silver Cross Hospital had such a generous vision for how they wanted to redevelop this campus. They wanted it. It was part of their commitment and their vision. They wanted it to include housing for veterans, and they set out to find people that could make that happen. Uh, and that is how Volunteers of America and Silver Cross partnered together to turn this parcel of land uh, into a place for veterans to call home. We thank them for their incredible generosity and their tenacity uh, in taking this tough journey with us. Uh, and again, part of what makes this happen is a whole lot of people never taking no for an answer. 
And I'm very happy to introduce Dr. Christopher Udovich, the Chief Medical Officer for Silver Cross Hospital, uh, and we thank him for all of their tremendous work on our behalf. Well, thank you, and thank you for letting us be part of this festivities. Um, so I'm the Chief Medical Officer of Silver Cross, and what you may not know is I'm a local boy. I grew up in Joliet, uh, actually on a farm on the west side of Joliet. Pat, if you remember, there actually were farms on the west side of Joliet at one time. Um, my mother was a uh, teacher for the public school system, uh, teaching at Goppers for a couple decades. So just seeing the changes in this area on a personal level has been really inspiring and really neat to see. Uh, it wasn't long ago that uh, we got to see the Veterans Outpatient uh, Clinic open up and Aunt Martha's over there as they moved in right across the street. Uh, now we're here to celebrate the opening of Hope Manor at the former Silver Cross campus. A little over a decade ago, uh, Silver Cross made the difficult decision to build a replacement hospital about three and a half miles down the road. And when we did, we made a promise to the City of Joliet and to all of you that we would leave the campus much better than we found it 125 years ago. Today marks a significant milestone in that commitment, and we're delighted that we could donate the over eight acres here to the land of the Volunteers of America to develop this complex. We're also very proud to be able to give back to those men and women in the armed forces who have given so much of themselves to our country and hope this land and these buildings will continue to find a place of joy for them and bring hope to their families. Uh, but as you can see uh, from the fencing around the old uh, building there, we're not done. Over the next nine months, we'll be taking down some of those buildings and clearing the land for additional development. We'll be working with Mayor Orta Kirk and the City of Joliet to attract new developers to the area. Finally, I would be remiss if I didn't take a moment to thank the Silver Cross Healthy Community Commission chaired by Ms. Marjorie Woods. Marjorie, if you're here, could you stand up? And any other members of the commission, if you stand up? Yeah. Or just wave your hand. Very good. This group has been instrumental in helping to guide the redevelopment of this land. Uh, commission members are key stakeholders in the community and have volunteered endless hours on this initiative. They took a lead in identifying the residents of the east side of Joliet and worked closely with the volunteers to bring this project to fruition. I'd like to thank them for their leadership and dedication to Silver Cross in the community. In addition to the campus redevelopment, the commission has also provided over $2 million in grant or, uh, community organizations and scholarships to individuals who want to pursue careers in healthcare and college degrees. Finally, many thanks to the commission City of Joliet, our other elected officials, Volunteers of America, and most importantly, our veterans, and making today possible. Thank you for making sure Silver Cross will always be remembered and that you said of Joliet, but the commemorative bench that we have here at Hope Manor, um, we are truly blessed by you and touched by your thoughtfulness. Um, and to all our new neighbors, welcome home. Thank you. so many great stories that exist within uh, Hope Manor Juliet and, and uh, as we mentioned uh, part of creating it and I just wanted to mention one more uh, John Bobin who is over there uh, actually helped build this place and he himself is a veteran I know he had a lot of help from Jose over there but when I say help build it I mean uh, uh, he was here every single day and I know it was an act of love on his part to be able to do this for his fellow veterans but uh, he's with JJ Duffy and was the person that made sure that we would be able to get here by today so John Uh, I could say a lot of wonderful things uh, about this next person, and in fact I did uh, when we honored her last year at our 7th Annual Veterans Leadership Luncheon with our corporate Silver Star Award. As a matter of fact, we have two uh, honorees uh, from two of our last Veterans Leadership Luncheons uh, up here on stage, so quite a distinguished panel. We have Mayor Odekirk and uh, actually Deb Burkhart, who both recently received awards at our Veterans Leadership Luncheon. But I said then, and it remains true today, that she's truly one of the nicest people uh, that I've ever met, and so I would encourage all of you to have a chance to meet her before you leave. Um, she is with the National Equity Fund, who's been a key partner for us in several of our developments. And I've always said how wonderful it is to have someone who knows so much about money uh, also be someone who understands so much about people. And over the past 24 years, Deb has helped leverage over one billion with a B, dollars to give people who are struggling and in a crisis a place not just to call home, we say that a lot, but to actually be home. 
And within that number, over 4,000 veterans have a home because of her efforts. And within that number is Hope Manor One and Hope Manor Joliet. But her own efforts are multiplied by the passion she pushes out into the industry. She has become a subject matter expert on veterans' issues and a tireless advocate for creating a home for every veteran who's struggling. It would be impossible to calculate the number of lives she has touched with her kindness and dedication or the amount of joy that she's created in the world by bringing people home all over the country. So I will just let you hear from her directly. Please welcome Deb Burkhart from the National Equity Fund, one of our key financial partners for Hope Manor Joliet. What a wonderful partner. <laughs> it's nice to uh, meet and see everyone here who's been a part of this project. I want to congratulate Volunteers of America National Services, in addition to Volunteers of America Illinois, for providing more than a roof to homeless and low-income veterans and their families. You know, when veteran, homeless veterans have an opportunity to live in a veterans community, we've seen them benefit not just from affordable housing, but also from peer support and easy access to community services, uh, like the Veterans Outpatient Services Clinic and, and Aunt Martha's. Uh, the National Equity Fund provides both pre-development grants and equity financing to build uh, projects like Hope Manor Joliet and similar projects. Uh, we focus primarily in uh, 15 states across the country and we've been fortunate to provide pre-development and equity for about 4,500 units uh, to help be part of that coming down to virtual zero homelessness for, for veterans across the country. Uh, one of our veterans' uh, residents in New York expressed it, like Dina did, she, they expressed it best, saying that anyone with a home has neighbors, but here I live with my brothers and my sisters. And, and so you know, when we see great projects like this, we wonder how can we do more? And public-private partnerships are needed to finance. It's a nearly $20 million project. And in order to finance that, the National Equity Fund, which is a nonprofit equity fund, which buys low-income housing tax credits, and in this case, they were generously provided by Ida, uh, the next speaker. And in partnership with our investor, uh, J.P. Morgan Chase, uh, we provided $16.5 million for this project. We were 86% of total development costs. And you know what the best part about equity financing? is you never have to pay it back as long as you keep the project in compliance during the partnership life. And so that ensures that we are locking in long-term affordability and bringing a sustainable campus you know, where, where we had dilapidated buildings. It's important as we're looking at tax reform that we remember to keep the low-income housing tax credit program in, 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 the, in the mix. It has been the most successful production program to come out of Washington, D.C., with hundreds of thousands of affordable units built since 1986. Prior to that, you know, there's been a lot of ups and downs when the programs were directed by the federal government. The low-income housing tax credit program's priorities are dictated by each state, and we're fortunate that the state of Illinois sees veterans' housing as one of the priorities. Tax credits are a dollar for dollar reduction in the business tax liabilities. And I want to thank our tax credit investor, Chase, who also provided a $50,000 uh, pre development grant through our Bring Them Homes initiative. Um, in addition, uh, our another, other partner is City Community Development. Uh, I want to shout out if, if George Wright and Rob McGee are here. Um, they um, provided a $50,000 grant and have been one of our biggest funders of Bring Them Homes Initiative, providing about $3 million since 2012. Uh, and on, in addition to um, our partners, um, uh, NEF, uh, uh, our, my team from the Construction and the Asset Management Division, Erica and Bob are here. Uh, but I can't see them in the, in the crew. But, uh, but we all want to say that NEF really appreciates our long-term partnership with VOA and that we hope we can continue doing more to help veterans. Thank you. Um, I, for all of you um, who are probably not feeling like it's only about 69 degrees because you're sitting in the sort of blistering sun, I, I suspect it's feeling a little hotter out there. As soon as we are done, just as a reminder, we have lots of wonderful refreshments after we do the ribbon cutting. So make sure uh, that you take advantage of uh, your time here today and, and get some wonderful food in there uh, in, our, in our community room. 
Also, before I continue to thank people, I would be really remiss if I didn't thank uh, our wonderful staff that are here today. Not only our staff here at Hope Manor Joliet, uh, but our, our leadership team, Rhea, Lily, David, uh, uh, Sue, um, so many of them that work tirelessly every day to try and do the heavy lifting to make sure we can get these things done. So if all the volunteers of America of Illinois staff can just raise your hand so we can say thank you for what you're doing every day. And even Desiree is over there taking care of Nika's daughter. So if you see, <laughs> that's how seriously we take this job of service. So. Uh, I've mentioned more than a few times, and, uh, and Deb mentioned it also so eloquently, that developments like Hope Manor Joliet uh, don't just happen, uh, certainly they don't just happen without money, but they don't happen without the collaboration and hard work of a lot of people with a shared commitment to improving the lives of others. And we have been so fortunate to enjoy an incredible partnership with the Illinois Housing Development Authority that those of us often close to it call IDA, uh, who have played a critical role in all three of our Hope Manor projects. And, and hopefully uh, our fourth, no pressure, we have a fourth one literally pending with Ida uh, as we speak. Um, their mission, <laughs> elbow room, <laughs> um, their mission makes our mission possible. Our gratitude for their support and our work on behalf of veterans just cannot be overstated. I'm so excited to have Audrey, the Executive Director for the Illinois Housing Development Authority with us today to help celebrate what also represents the culmination of their hard work and commitment to bringing veterans home. Audra herself is a 20-year advocate of creating homes and communities for people all over Illinois. Uh, she's really, really dedicated to this work, really smart, and a very important part of making today possible. Please welcome Audra Hemrick from the Illinois Housing Development Authority. On behalf of Governor Rauner and everyone at Ida, well, I want to thank everyone here, particularly Nancy Hughes-Moyer from um, Veterans of America, Illinois, Mike King from Veterans of America, Dr. Udovich from in the Silver Cross Hospital folks, Deb Burkhart from NEF, um, Mayor Odekirk in the city of Joliet, Senator Durbin, Congressman Foster, Senator McGuire, and especially Dina Gwynn and your husband, you know, she's generous with her words, but she's actually generous enough to let us take a peek at her home. And when you open your home up to somebody, you open up your heart, so thank you for that. Um, building and preserving affordable housing is never easy. In permanent supportive housing, it's even more complicated. We like to call it lasagna financing because there's layers and layers of financing, and that's the reason, part of the reason there's so many people sitting up here. But securing rental assistance for the units is also a huge part of making it affordable for the folks that live here. And coordinating support services for the folks that are customized just for their family. No more and no less than what they actually need. And it's Ida's mission to create more opportunities for veterans and other um, low-income people living in Illinois. And we want to um, achieve long-term stability. But we can't do this without our partners. Ida has financed nearly six hundred affordable apartments for veterans in the last uh, six years. This is a third phase of our help with Hope Manor and um, our fingers are crossed for you uh, for, for the next. Um, we, we are also um, provided state and federal tax credits. We provide that equity to um, um, folks just like the Volunteers of America when they're developing affordable housing. We also have affordable housing trust fund financing that comes through the state of Illinois and federal home dollars. And we know these apartments are more than an apartment. They provide access to health care. Um, they provide access to education and job opportunities. And really, it helps people maintain their self-deficiency and independence in a way that many of us just take it um, automatically. We assume that we have this every day. We take it for granted. But the efforts from Volunteers of America of Illinois has been extraordinary. But none of this progress is possible without the support of our elected officials in Washington, Springfield, and here in Joliet. We're fortunate to have Senator Durbin and Congressman Foster as advocates for us in Washington. Um, they recognize the importance of the Low Income Housing Tax Credit Program, the home funds, the rental support, and the federal resources to help create um, community, right? They talk about it being a family, but this is community. So here in Joliet and other cities around the state. We also thank Senator McGuire. He was actually a sponsor for us last December when we extended our state tax credit program. So thank you for that. It's a big resource and it was used right here. Um, and, and 
uh, right here in Joliet again, we have to thank um, Mayor Odekirk. We all know that projects like this don't happen without political will. So thank you. We appreciate all your help and your advocacy. So we're grateful for the chance to be here today and uh, celebrate in the building, but most importantly, celebrate the folks that are living here. And thank you, veterans, for all you do. Uh, before we introduce uh, our, our wonderful, wonderful last speaker who's so dear to my heart, I just want to uh, do a couple of other shout outs, if you could indulge me. Uh, Catherine Mazzocco, who is from BMO Harris. Um, uh, as Audra mentioned, the lasagna uh, of funding, uh, BMO Harris was critical sort of meat uh, in that lasagna of funding. And so uh, we thank them for their great uh, partnership on this and, and possibly, hopefully, uh, on Hope Manor Village as well. So thank you, Catherine, for being here. Uh, I also want to uh, acknowledge and say hello to General Mukiyama, who is over there. You will see him. You want to raise your hand? Um, in, a, in addition to being a very distinguished Vietnam era veteran and one of our honorees uh, from our Veterans Leadership Luncheon, uh, he is um, an expert, a subject matter expert on uh, moral injury uh, and is also the founder of Military Outreach USA and uh, a great partner for Volunteers of America in terms of the work we're doing with veterans. So thank you for being such a great friend and for being here today. We really appreciate it. A real, real U.S. hero. So thank you so much. Uh, and as a, a segue to our uh, last speaker, um, I, I want to say a personal thank you to Pat Sheridan and to Priya and to Jack Gordon and to John Letterer. Uh, these are our, our real sort of partners uh, and our family uh, from the national organization. Volunteers of America is a national ministry of service, but more than anything, it's an organizational family. And, and these are, are really my sort of brothers and sisters at VOA. And uh, we do a lot of heavy lifting together. And sometimes, you know, we sort of box it out a little bit too, uh, but I'm 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 so proud to serve with you, and I thank you so much for all that you've helped us make happen here uh, in Illinois. Thank you so much. I really appreciate everything. Um, our next speaker is very dear to me uh, as a friend, uh, as the CEO for Illinois here, uh, and, and as just a person who's out there trying to make the world a better place. Uh, he is the National President and CEO for Volunteers of America. And, and a couple of things about Mike. Um, one, he's one of the happiest people uh, you will ever know. I've known him for a long time. I've never, ever seen him have a bad day. Um, and you will soon learn uh, when he starts speaking that he is from Texas, but most importantly, he literally has a personality and, and a heart uh, that is not only as big as Texas, but I, I suspect perhaps bigger than Texas. Um, and when he commits to something, he doesn't quit. And that kind of leadership starts from the top and sort of trickles down throughout our entire organization. And he's been a wonderful role model for me for what it means to persevere and to never give up on the stuff that matters the most. And when he says veterans are a top priority for Volunteers of America across the country, he throws his heart and as many resources as we can muster over that fence to make sure that we are offering veterans the most innovative solutions and the most creative resources uh, to give them the support that they need to live a really full life when they come home. And as with immense pride and great affection that I introduce to you uh, our last speaker <laughs> uh, and uh, our national president, Mike King. You know, stick a fork in me, I'm done. You know, what can I say after that? I mean, you know, really, I mean, goodness gracious. First of all, you know, it, you, you get a little bit guilty sitting up here. You know, I think, you know, maybe the tent should have been out there and we should have been out in the open and we would have talked shorter, you know? <laughs> we wouldn't have said as much, you know, if we were having to do all of this, you know, like some of you guys are having to do. So we, we're going to cut right to the chase. As you can see, we can't do this alone. None of us can do this alone. At the same time, look at this and know, we tell people we're in the love business, and this is what love looks like. This is what love looks like, right here, right here. This is how we project that love onto the people we're here to serve. You do it too. You have done it. That's why you're here. You're here because you helped make all of this happen. All these folks helped make all of this happen. It was with money, it was with passion, it was with caring, it was with legislation and protecting the legislation. And let me tell you, we can't do this without it. We can't do this without it. And you know what? We're just getting warmed up. Right? We're just getting warmed up. You bet there'll be more proposals. 
You bet, because there's a lot more gray-headed folks like me around than there are young bucks, and we need more of this. And we're going to need more and more of it as we age. We're one of the largest providers of low-income housing, and, and, and specifically low-income housing for seniors in America, and we're not even halfway there. We're not even halfway there. So absolutely, we've got to keep this fire burning. We've got to keep this going. The state of Illinois ought to be really, really proud today. Really proud. Number one, proud of your team. Illinois is well represented. First of all, you've got a national board member out there. I saw him, Tom Dolan. Where are you, Tom? Wait, wait, wait there, you, there you go. Well represented on the national board by Mr. Tom Dolan, healthcare executive extraordinaire. But you're well represented by this team right here at Volunteers of America in Illinois. And this staff that Nancy recognized and had stand because what you see in them and what you see in their work here is the passion. And you know, you can't rent that, okay? You can't teach it or coach it. You kind of have to be born with it and then you have to be led by it. And that's what you've got with this lady here. You've got passion, <laughs> absolute passion. You can't quantify that, but when you've got it, Baby, you need to milk it. You need to milk it, milk it, milk it, and use it all you can. Don't ever let yourself be, be discouraged in any shape, form, or fashion because everything is possible when you have that. Everything is possible. The brains and the bucks are right here behind me, okay? They are right here, and they've made that happen, but here's the gas. Here's the gasoline right here and right out there, all of you. This staff needs your support 24-7 to make this happen. I can tell you what, we are really, really proud of them. You were the first state to start direct service programming in moral injury, a concept that we brought to the organization three years ago. You were the first state to start it right here in River City, and I'm punkin' proud of you. I'm really, really proud of you for doing that. It's going gonna, it's gonna to make a huge impact, a huge impact. And think about it in this way, as the leading cause of veteran suicide. You won't ever see this on a spreadsheet. You know why? Because you won't see the suicides that didn't happen, right? That didn't happen. If you stopped one, you made it all work. And I can tell you right now, you've stopped a lot more than one in the last few years. And you're going to continue to stop more than one with experts like who you just met. So thank you so much for this. This is amazing. We want to do it again. And again, and again, and again, and we will. We absolutely will. God bless you. Did you want to say a few words? You don't have to. If you want. <laughs> I'd like to introduce a great friend to, to Hope Manor Joliet and someone who I've gotten to know and who was really in some of those early heavy lifting conversations. Uh, we sort of asked him at the last minute to say a few words, but uh, Mr. Mike Simleton, the Executive Director for the Housing Authority of Joliet. Thank you. I'm reminded of uh, a recent book that I was reading. Um, um, seven hab uh, habits of a highly effective leader and in in inside of that book there's a, a chapter four that talks about win win no deal and there are three things that are essential to a win win no deal one being um, one being integrity um, the second thing being uh, maturity and then the third being the mentality, the abundance mentality. Integrity means that, as you know, means say what you mean and mean what you say. And then the maturity is consideration and courage. Having the consideration to um, consider the folks that you're in relationship with. And then uh, having the courage to ask for what you want out of that deal. And then having them that mentality that there is a win-win for everybody. Nobody has to walk away feeling like I just got hosed or something like that, right? So um, I would say that Volunteer of America came to us, and I think that it is a win-win situation. Would you not agree? <laughs> and I, I have to be honest with you that I had a... Um, a paradigm shift in my own mind 
And, you know, my brothers were veterans, but they never saw combat. And so in my mind, I didn't think, you know, needed a whole lot. But I happened to sit down with a veteran, and, and I shared this with, uh, uh, where is he, Carlton? I shared it with him. Oh, there he is out there. That this gentleman and I sat down, he said, Michael, let, let me talk to you for a minute. Understand that I had a family. And I went from a family life to combat, and I was special forces. My job was when I enter a room, look at who's the biggest threat in the room and see how you can take them down, and then you go on and so far. And he said then to go from that lifestyle back to civilian life. He said, can you imagine the, 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 the turmoil or, or, or not having the resources that need it? To, to do that, but I'm going to tell you, these structures are the beginning, the beginning of setting veterans back on the pathway to recovery. That is a win-win, win-win. And, and, and lastly, I'm going to say this, lastly, honestly, because you guys are out in the sun. My job, you know, when the staff come to me and say, Michael, we got this deal, you just need to sign here. That's my job, sign here. And, um, and, and I'm a good person at signing that, but you need to know the people that make it, make it happen for us. And, and, and Nancy, I know you echo this as well. Uh, where's Tina? Tina. Tina is a veteran too, right? And she, she's the one that sets that document in front of me and says, Michael, you need to sign this here, you know? And so that paradigm shift in my head said to Tina, look, we got to pursue every vast voucher we can for veterans. Because I just had a shift in my mind. And uh, Nancy, thank you for allowing me to, to get what's on my heart out after hearing all of this stuff, OK? I appreciate you all. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Um, I sincerely mean this. God bless each and every one of you for your commitment, not only to being here, but for the role each and every one of you played. Uh, from, again, John, who was uh, helping build this place, to Mike and Keith, who helped design it, to Mr. Kriminger, who fought for our right to be here, uh, to my dad, who helped give birth to me. Indirectly, you know what I'm saying. Uh, every single person, uh, every single person, uh, if you're standing here today, in your own way, you made this possible. And on behalf of every veteran who's going to have a safe, wonderful, welcoming, supportive place to call and be home tonight. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. God bless you all. The American Legion Band is going to close us in song while everyone from this stage moves over to that red ribbon uh, for our official ribbon cutting. Thank you all so much. Uh -oh. <laughs> 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 I know, I know. <laughs>